I have a confession to make about my RPGing, which is that I don't really read blogs. And I know there are so many great blogs out there with amazing content, but it's too much for me to manage. And I've recently noticed that there are some published compendiums of blog material. I mean, they're not recent. This one's from 2015. This one's from 2014, but I've just recently noticed them. And I got this one. This is actually the blog collection two, the hack and slash compendium. And I've been meaning to do a video on it, which I haven't yet done. And then recently somebody asked me about this, the dungeon dozen, which I had not heard of. Also, that's copyright 2014. And the author of this was kind enough to send it to me. So I'm going to do a discussion here of the Dungeon Dozen, and then I'm going to get to this, and maybe I'll pick up the, I think there's three of these, maybe I'll pick up the other two and do a discussion of this at some point, because the there's just so much great blog material. And I've covered Knock Magazine, which in and of itself is a compendium of blog material in print form. And that's kind of the only way I can really get to the material. And this Dungeon Dozen is a, it says volume one. I don't know if there's a volume two. Hopefully there is or will be. It's a, a compendium. It says this book is comprised of entries from the Dungeon Dozen blog. I'll put all these links up in the, in my video here. It says look for additional tables at the blog. And I don't know if that blog is currently updated or not. The table of contents here is, well, let me explain what this is. First of all, it's D12 tables, the Dungeon Dozen, and this is my D12. We'll be rolling it a little bit in the video to see what we get. And we got really creative piece of art here. The author of this also has done some of the art in, is credited as one of the artists in the book. And the art in this book is, is great, as are the tables. It's just a collection of D12 tables. And they are in the table of contents listed alphabetically, but they're, they're sort of all over the place conceptually and factually in terms of what they offer. For example, there's a table fluids in the dungeon wall, or right under it is found dead in a ditch. I mean, you know, found mixed among the desirable scrolls and tomes, or hard times for city folk, or what's haunting the skies. And we'll look through this and get a sense of the there's the a random nature of the random tables because they are all taken from a blog now if you wanted to there's two apparatus in the back matter here they're called quick references so here they are grouped like if you wanted to have some tables that have to do with characters you could turn to these tables or dressing their city dressing and dungeon dressing sort of the more common kinds of things you would find town, underworld, wilderness. There are encounter tables for city, dragon, dungeon, a giant, a couple of, what does the giant have in its curio cabinet? Let's look, let's just look up that and see what, what we've got here. We're just going to do a roll and I'll read you a couple of entries here that, um, the giant has a shabbily folded stack of spare large sacks, or the giant has a necklace of giant baby teeth strung on a cord, a gift from its mother. Cute. The, there's listing of items, atypical. There's a pain in the ass table. Let's look at that. Let's see what that could pop. Pain in the ass treasures. Great piece of art here. Let's look, first of all, let's look at this art. Great art. And a diamond studded earring adorning the ear of a giant ape monarch. I guess that's a pain in the ass if you want to get it for yourself. Enchanted items, gonzo, mundane, underworld. And then there is a more typical index, which is listing things by topic. And I noticed in the index that these are, these can reference just individual entries. So if you were looking up, for example, assassin, these are not all assassin tables, but the word assassin or the concept of assassin is mentioned in the things that are listed here. 
and so that could be maybe more or less useful to you because you'd have to be more intentional about trying to go to a particular table to get an entry, say, with a non-magical book in it, for example. The thing that is one of the things I think that's different about this collection than others is not so much that it's kind of random and all over the place, but that there's like a lightness or a there's a humor to almost, there's a humor to a lot of the entries in it, I think. And I'm just going to page through and we'll do some, we'll do some random rolls and, and see what I mean here. Okay. Let's, let's do this. Dungeon level one highlights. We have a chain gang of escapees from the mad jailer on level two. Unwilling to explain the unoccupied set of bloodstained manacles. What do we have on level two? On level two, we have a herd of elusive dungeon deer on a perpetual feeding migration through environs to scattered moss and lichen beds led by an intelligent stag. Now, one thing I want to say, it happens to be the case that I am making this video while I'm playing Four Against Darkness. And I've noticed that this, to me, has a feeling of something I could put into Four Against Darkness. I don't know how to explain it better than that. And if you play Four Against Darkness, maybe you understand what I mean by that. It could just be that I'm, that I'm playing it at the same time and indeed filming this some, sometime after I did my Four Against Darkness video where I was asking for recommendations and help of things to get for my Four Against Darkness. And I did end up getting a whole bunch of stuff based off that, which I'll, I might do another video on. But one of the things it led me back to was the Four Against Darkness BGG page, and I downloaded some Overland, some fan-made Overland material. And so this uh, is feeling like I could put this right into what I'm playing there, which is kind of already a home brew. In any case, number one, dungeon level three, memorable features. A grand promenade of the pre-human city, cave tenements, former domain of the subhumans, now housing for cult fanatics awaiting the arrival of their terrible deity. So even linking these three things together, you could come up with the beginning of some type of a story and I could see, let's just keep going here, dungeon level four, the vital bits. A party of subhumans led by Necromancer's chief associate with a shipment of arms and a secret communique for the Merman Theocrat. So one could use this to string together a, a session, a narrative, a beginning of a, of a story. And it, this just so happens to be the dungeon level things that are here together. And let's go to the, there's a dungeon Kickstarters table, a squad of freelance ogre mercenaries looking to go upscale, need custom armor and equipment of highest quality, gigs already lined up, a sure thing. So that gives a flavor of some of the humor involved. And I do want to, I do want to be sure to show you the, the art along the way, because it's, it's really, it's really great. There's dungeon love connections that you could have here if you wanted. Now, how would you use this? When would you use this? I don't know, but it's amusing. The cutest kobold on record. And let's see who the cutest kobold on record is in love with. A wandering dungeon sage with the hormones of a 16 year old. <laughs> okay. Moving on to something perhaps more typical of a dungeon. Here is a statuary, an inanimate statuary. Incomprehensibly abstract design, magic enhanced study reveals 3D map of the dungeon. Again, this is the kind of thing you could very, very easily just put into, I keep going back to Four Against Darkness in my mind, as I said, maybe because I'm playing it, but maybe because it just it is a natural fit but really into any any kind of fantasy rule set that you were working with if you were a gm around a table or what i call a regular gm as opposed to a solo gm 
this could be something that you would just have table side and, and roll up and use to riff off of, I suppose. But as the soloist, it could be anything really could be the start of a, of a session. And you could use this as a building out a story before you even had a rule set. And I have videos about how to do that on my channel. And I talk about that in my solo GM guide about how to start without a rule set. And I think that this Dungeon Dozen could be a great resource for doing something like that or just telling a, telling a kind of crazy story. All right, let's move on. Here's something about, there's like some backstory stuff here. So the fighting men, why do we fight? So this could be a backstory for a character. Frequent exorcism of reptilian killer instincts in gore-soaked melee required for maintenance of otherwise considerable personal charm. So a sort of strange and specific motivation for fighting. Oh, we saw that. Let's see what's found dead in a ditch. Found dead in a ditch. Oh, a tear-streaked elf in funerary raiment succumbed to overwhelming despair. That's that's sad. That is sad. And again, a look at the art here. The combination of the art and the tables in this is just, it's, it's really, it's kind of embodies, I think, what for me is something so great about this hobby, which is the, the real artistic nature and the, the, the creativity of people in it. So here, number two, I, this, I get keep am I getting twos, ones, and tens a lot? I don't know. All right, let's look at two and three. Found strapped to the paladin's war horse. Two is a bundle of detoxifying herbs for cleansing tea fast. Or the bedroll of righteousness, enchanted to have rest requirement and double healing rate. And that's pretty cool. That that is that's pretty cool too. The gastric obstruction that killed the colossal worm. What was it? What was that gastric obstruction? It was a magical glaive embedded in the duodendum. <laughs> Here's an amusing giant world of the giant worm of the underworld. It's an arrow worm bred by subterraneans as missile weapons that start eating targets upon impact. Inside the giant's curio cabinet, a cork stoppered bottle of giant's cologne, indescribably offensive. The intelligent dragon's current obsession. See, it's hard to just kind of read one table and move on because they're all, they're all pretty compelling. LARPing with bored vampire guests and lich acquaintance likes to play halflings. <laughs> now, I mean, that's just funny. Uh, would it be like, quote unquote, useful in something? I don't know, but it sort of brings a smile to, it brings a smile to me. And I think it's, um, it's some good RPG humor. Items of moderate interest in the Ogre King's Horde. Exquisitely rendered stone sculpture depicting seductive ogress in repose. <laughs> Well, I'm glad I'm getting these results because it is giving a fair sense of a fair sense of some of what's offered here. Here's a table. Just getting in the dungeon is brutal. Locate the dungeon door only in a dream state induced by exceedingly rare cave fungus that grows on hellhound droppings. So could you build a story around that? Yes, you absolutely could. It would be a story that had that type of humor and a and and approach to it. You could do this with many different rule sets, or you could be using many different rule sets and roll this up and have this be like something that has to be searched for or found or whatever, or, or maybe conjured. I don't know. So the last known appearance of the rogue sorcerer. Where was the rogue sorcerer last? The rogue sorcerer was plunged gracefully into the gaping maw of colossal worm while laughing maniacally. Well, Maybe it caused that obstruction in, in that worm. Maybe that was caused by the last, the rogue sorcerer. Here are some manifestations of the sorcerer's derangement. So the, the, the mad sorcerer involuntarily high 
involuntary high-speed spewing forth of esoterica and erudition in a highly educational, well-organized screed. Here is a nature goes haywire table. Unpredictable gusts of wind capable of tossing full-grown men about like leaves, sky gods unresponsive to campaign of blood sacrifice. Now occupying the recently depopulated dungeon area. A massive bioluminescent fungal bloom of every hue speeds decomposition of deceased former denizens, continuously launching a noxious miasma of spores. Well, that's completely atmospheric, literally, <laughs> figuratively, and could add quite a bit to your story, to your table. On or around the mighty warrior's carcass. What is on or around the mighty warrior's carcass? A war log featuring crude drawings of various weird creatures followed by tally marks. Could go a little bit, little bit sci-fi here. Planets in the vicinity of the campaign world. Spheres of desolation wiped clean of life by vengeful gods and left in their orbits as a testimony to their power and authority. Quick cultural quirks of the barbarian. Strong oral tradition equals a monotonous chant for every occasion. Quick cultural quirks of the deep forest people. Minimal oral communication, especially on duty, but plenty of eyebrow signaling. Extremely garrulous when intoxicated. Here's a table for a reanimation projects of the chaotic necromancer. What's he working on? Arcane architect, designer of otherwise impenetrable deep levels of mega dungeon, prepping for incursion. Ooh, here's a table of sentient liquids, gases, and vapors. Gust devils, capricious beings from the wind plane, infest dungeons and delight in extinguishing torches and slamming doors. I like this. And again, you could see this could be something here that could really impact your story quite immediately if you wanted it to, as opposed to being more of a, a dressing kind of thing. Something has upset the ancient dragon. What is it? He hasn't been able to get a good fortnight's sleep in ages due to incessant howling of monster in dragon inaccessible lair. Well, maybe this dragon wants you to come help him, and maybe that howling has to do with those um, things we just rolled up that were going through the dungeon. Something a little bit more common as a random table stuff in a chest. Beautifully carved miniature wooden representation of each party member. That's cool. Maybe that could take a wound for you or something. Talents on loan from the gods. Divine spells. Prophetic slumber provides subject with oracular dreams. All right, let's look a little bit here at the underworld. The un underworld river vessels. Casino boat protected by treaties, neutral ground for all factions, run by extremely dangerous vampires. Here's an unexpected dungeon boon. Managing to survive, death ray trap triggers pro propagation of tissues, enhancing strength and endurance upon full healing. Another great piece of art. An unexpected, the unexpected dungeon guest star. Honored Swordmaster from famous school seeks duel worthy of expertise. Some useless hiring, hirelings. Brang the Despondent Barbarian. Fur shorts, battle axe, clan wiped out before his eyes as a child. Now seeks suicide by dungeon at the earliest opportunity. There is a malfunctioning magic mouth and it is uttering things. What is it uttering? A topical stand-up comedy routine. So you could could really just find some tables here that you liked and then build out your own, easily build out your own dungeon crawl with those as kind of central points that you needed to deal with. Let's see what the weird menace in the watery depths is. Coral city of the highly intelligent, desperately envious, but ultimately impotent cephalods. cephalods. Let's find a weird peril in the forest. The hidden enclave of perpetually drunken elves. And find a final thing to roll on a, try the zealots in the streets. 
priestess of Agarox, the Axe Lord, more than willing to demonstrate the superior, superiority of her faith, using the legendary axe of helm cleaving, punctuated judiciously with volleys of throwing axes of certain disarmament. And let's finally roll on this. Yeah, but this troll, what does this troll do? This troll just ate a 500-year-old cask of spirits, suddenly plunged into deep introspection, searching for mirror to stare into, awaiting epiphany of self-knowledge. So your troll there could be just engaging in some serious navel gazing as a result of that. So that is a look inside the Dungeon Dozen. And as I said, it is a compilation of material from the this blog, Roll 1D12 Blogspot and Blessings of the God, Blessings of the Dice Gods Blogspot. I will put the links down below. In some future video, I'm going to take a look at my other compilation here from this other blog and if anyone has recommendations for me for printed material that is from blogs, compilations like this, please let me know and I will try to get my hands on it.